I'm speaking to the, con the tension between continuities and discontinuities. In other words, what are those groups that are so embedded in society that we, we can only look in surprise and in sometimes in horror at how those particular pra practices continue into the post-1994 South Africa. One way would be to ask, are we in a post-apartheid society or are we in a post-1994 society? Because I don't think those two things are quite the same. One of the high points in my own intellectual life was to be a student during the 1960s and 1970s and to be thrust into the class race debate probably one of the most stimulating sets of, uh, of, of, of ideas and ex strong, virulent at times exchanges around the issues of class and race. Race and class were examined to see, first of all, which one should take priority in understanding the society. And understanding the society from this particular group of people who largely participated in that, uh, from the liberal and the revisionist position, as they were known then, would be how will the society then change? Gender in South Africa added the debate initially as an add-on. Um, and it still functions largely as that. I myself, I myself have not found a way of writing with, with my predominant focus on the issue of race to integrate a much wider set of, of issues. So I, and I plead guilt over here as well. Um, when it featured in the 1950s and the 1960s, it was about women. So you would find statistics, demographic details on how many women were in particular areas, how many women in the, in the Bantustans, how many women in employment in various categories, but not gender not the gendered uh, position of both male and female. I'm just going to say one thing, and I keep on referring to him because I find nobody who says it any better, and that is to refer to, um, to Zygmunt Bauman's uh, The Modernity and the Holocaust. What it does is it effaces, it removes the face of the individual, and each individual becomes a specimen of a category. Specimen of a category. If you haven't read that, the afterword to his 2000 ed uh, edition of Modernity and the Holocaust captures it so am amazingly beautifully, that effacing of the face. We lose the individual. We see somebody, and they already classified as something specific. Continuity with the classification through the census. <laughs> the census has, has merrily, and I've engaged in, in, in two exchanges, public exchanges in, in the newspaper, with the uh, statistician general about using race classification. And it was a frustrating exercise, and it was revealing as well about the responses to that. But what is of most concern, the only thing that I'm going to say here, is that it, it 2004, let me just see if I can find that particular quotation. 2004, the instruction given, the instruction given to to um, the instruction given to the census takers was if you find somebody born, I'm not going to find it, if you find somebody born after 1994, you will classify that person as though you were operating under apartheid. Those words are, it, it actually made me go cold to actually see that stated in a document of how people should behave and classify others. You should classify those as they, as they would have been classified under apartheid. There's a groove. There's a groove that is as big as, the, as a ditch. And sorry, but I think that that stands in the way of so much that when, when, when you refer to uh, not creating new identities but creating new racialized identities, that is what we're largely dealing with. Not everywhere. But it's against that, that other identities, other ways of being have to be created, against it.